but first and most importantly, the most important contribution, uh, the most exciting news from this uh, trip to the United States was the birth of my grandson, our first grandchild. So you're going to see a picture of my grandson. That's my biggest news, but I have a little bit of, of, of other stuff to talk about as well. When we met with the diaspora, and, and Jeff and I, my wife, we went around to uh, for two weeks in early December and met with our Armenian American groups uh, from uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Boston, and New York. And in those meetings, we always started off with, uh, I made a little bit of a presentation because I wanted the uh, Armenian American community to understand what we at the embassy, what the U.S. government is trying to do here in America, in Armenia. What is our mission in Armenia? And what our mission is, is simple to say. It's a simple, uh, it's a clear mission. Uh, what we're trying to do here at the embassy is to help Armenia succeed, help Armenia succeed as a democratic, prosperous, secure country. And how do we do that? First way is by promoting internal reform, and I'm glad to talk more about that, internal reform in Armenia, economic, political, social reform. And second, uh, we do it by helping Armenia to develop options, and by that I mean regional integration, to help Armenia become better integrated with its neighbors. And third, by keeping Armenia focused on the West, keep Armenia looking toward uh, the Western Europe, toward uh, the EU, toward the United States and NATO. Keep Armenia looking West because all countries need options. No country can be totally dependent on one border or totally dependent on one partner. All countries need options, and that's what we're trying to do, is to help Armenia develop options so it can pick and choose uh, uh, what, how, what kind of partnership and cooperation it wants with, uh, with other countries. So how did the conversations go? We met with all sorts of groups, women's groups, youth groups, business groups, big town hall meetings at all the churches, uh, and there was a common pattern to all these meetings. First was regional issues. In all my meetings, there were lots of questions, comments, and suggestions on Turkey, on protocols, on history, uh, on Azerbaijan, on Nagorno-Karabakh, and, uh, and, and now on, on Syria. Lots of interest in the diaspora community on Syria as well. The second area, and I was very gratified with this, the, the second area was Armenia today, the Republic of Armenia in 2013. I was really happy to see that the Armenian American community is very interested in the well-being of the Armenian people and how the country, how the Republic of Armenia is doing. We talked about elections and human rights, business climate, governance issues, all sorts of internal Armenian issues. I was very happy that they were interested in all those issues. And the third common theme in all of our meetings was how can we help uh, each and every group uh, each and every meeting, uh, many questions on how can we, how can the Armenian American community help the people of Armenia, help the Republic of Armenia. And this brings up the idea of partnership, was, which, which was one of my key themes throughout all these discussions. Partnership. Uh, we met with a number of groups, well-known diasporan groups, AGBU, and a number of well-known diasporan groups who are doing very important work here in Armenia. And there was a lot of emphasis on education as well. The Davidian Foundation from Boston, I'm sorry, from New York, is doing some very interesting work uh, with uh, Armenian officials going to Fletcher School. About 200 Armenian officials have gone to Fletcher School, paid for by this foundation. And the Carnegie Corporation of New York is, is interested in working here. So we're going to try to find some ways to cooperate with them as well. So education will be a, uh, a, a, an increasingly important area of cooperation between the United States and Armenia. So again, thank you very much. Just in closing, I want to uh, take this opportunity to publicly thank Secretary Clinton. I want to thank her for her contribution to U.S.-Armenia relations and to this region. She visited Yerevan twice during her tenure as Secretary of State. And I want to welcome our new Secretary of State, uh, Mr. Kerry, who, who will take office, I believe, on Friday. And, uh, and he's well known in the region. He knows the region well. And I'm confident will, uh, will be a tremendous Secretary of State for the United States, for the world, and for this region particularly. And finally, I hope you saw your calendars. Before we went on this diaspora tour, we had a great event at our house uh, where we had uh, a number of uh, Armenian artists, disabled artists. And uh, in the calendar and on the wall at our house, which uh, uh, please come see some time we have we have exhibited artwork by uh, disabled Americans and disabled uh, Armenians which is really tremendous and shows what uh, what people can do with the right talents and the right opportunities
so uh, as I understand, uh, during uh, the meetings with the diaspora in the United States, you were urging them uh, to come and make investments in Armenia. Uh, were you able to offer them some guarantees uh, that their investments will be protected in Armenia, especially given uh, some uh, sad uh, experience that we have, uh, for example, uh, the case of uh, Edmond Khudyan? I mean, we talked a lot about economic trade and economic issues. And, and what, what I saw at, for example, the ArmTech conference in San Francisco was very reassuring. What I saw was when the, when the climate is right, when the climate is right, uh, the talents uh, uh, and creativity of the Armenian people uh, creates a real economic success story. And American, U.S. companies, U.S. investment in that area is really a, a key part of Armenia's success. We're real partners in that area. So that's the good side of the story, that U.S. investment here, while not we're not number one in terms of quantity, we are number one in terms of quality. The high quality U.S. investment is helping transform Armenia into a 21st century knowledge-based economy. But there's a less positive side of the story as well that you alluded to. There still are, as you identified, there still are some serious business climate issues that need to be addressed uh, and which we're working with the gov government of Armenia to address. Uh, there needs to be better competition, more competition in the Armenian economy so that small and medium-sized enterprises and entrepreneurship can flourish. And I just heard a recommitment by the Prime Minister this morning of the government's uh, dedication, determination to do that. Second, there needs to be more transparency, especially in the areas of tax and customs. And third, the, the rule of law question that you, that you cited, the, the independent judiciary rule of law. American investors need to understand and need to have confidence uh, that, that if they have a dispute with a partner or they have an issue here in Armenia, uh, that they will get fair treatment in either the courts or some kind of an arbitration mechanism. So what I'd say is the U.S. investment uh, is good here, but it could be a lot better. It could be a lot deeper and a lot broader. And we're going to continue to work on all those issues that I've cited. <coughs> Uh, just continue the topic of economic cooperation. Uh, as uh, far as we know, uh, there is no uh, agreement on economic co cooperation at uh, the government level. And uh, I think this issue was also raised by uh, Armenian diaspora. Are any uh, steps planned in that uh, direction? We have a, a very active bilateral dialogue on uh, economic issues. We've recently expanded that dialogue. The, it's, in the, it's in the format of a, of a, of a task force, the U.S.-Armenia task force. We've expanded that agenda to include trade, investment, and cooperation. And it's a high-level interagency uh, dialogue on both sides. Both sides have high-level interagency participation. And, and based on the experience we had in, uh, in October, we had a plenary session. There are also working groups that meet more regularly, but we had a plenary session in October. Uh, it was a very active, very frank, and friendly dialogue and I think that we can accomplish the bilateral dialogue that we need through that mechanism. Doesn't mean we can't do more. There are a couple of treaties that people have considered, people have recommended. There's a trade and investment framework agreement people have recommended and Washington is considering all those. Well, those are all part of the agenda to see what we can do to, to bolster this economic uh, dialogue. But uh, my, my basic response is that we have a dialogue now. It's an effective dialogue uh, and that uh, I'm confident that through that mechanism we can uh, deal with whatever economic trade and investment issues come come up. Uh, in uh, 2012, uh, Armenia, uh, Armenia's assessment of U.S.-Armenian uh, relations was uh, very high and uh, also uh, it's also sort of uh, I would like to hear uh, your opinion on this uh, and uh, besides the U.S. is a uh, co-chair of the Minsk group and Armenia has always uh, pointed out the balanced approach of the United States in that process. Uh, so uh, I would like you to hear your assessment of the U.S.-Armenian relations and what are uh, the steps that are planned for uh, 2013. Uh, Maya, thank you. 2012 was really an important year for us uh, bilaterally. It was the 20th anniversary of our establishment of our diplomatic relationship, of our bilateral partnership. And we had a number of events, including a very important visit by Secretary Clinton to commemorate that 20th anniversary. And her meeting here uh, with the President, the Foreign Minister, very substantive and, and worked together on, on all the issues, including the Minsk group process, the difficult Nagorno-Karabakh negotiations, was a key part of the, the, of the agenda of her visit. 
And what I would say about 2013 is we, 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 are, we intend to deepen that partnership, deepen that relationship, especially in the economic area. And as I mentioned earlier, I think education, you'll see a lot of activity and, and a lot of cooperation, not necessarily government to government, but people to people cooperation in the area of education as well. So economy and education, I hope, will be, uh, will be the, 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 the main events of U.S.-Armenia relations in 2013. On the Minsk process, just briefly, uh, I wish I had a lot of success to report. I don't. But what I can say is the ministers just met uh, Monday this week in Paris. They met with the co-chairs, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Armenia and Azerbaijan met with the co-chairs in Paris on Monday. So the parties are still at the table, the parties are still talking, and the Minsk process, uh, as difficult as the negotiations have been and as frustrating as they've been, at least they've kept the parties at the table for 18, 20 years now and have prevented the outbreak of large-scale hostilities. And I think that's important, uh, an important success uh, even though it's not enough. We want more, but that's an important success th from the Minsk process. Uh, so I have two questions. First, the uh, Armenian society is very much interested uh, with the forthcoming elections, and uh, I would like uh, to hear from you whether uh, there are any issues, concerns, uh, to hear your assessment of the dynamics. The, the elections are very important. I, I talked a lot about the May elections in, on the diaspora tour and assessed that in the May elections there were some improvements, uh, improvements of uh, media access, the, the opposition independent voices, uh, by all accounts, had better access uh, to the media in the, uh, in the May elections. Uh, I think the, the polling places, and we visited many of them, international observers, U.S. Embassy observers, many Armenian observers, uh, visited polling places and again saw a, a great improvement. There were problems in May. Absolutely. The, the, the ODIR, the OSC ODIR and others identified some, se some serious problems in May. Uh, the vote buying, widespread reports of vote buying, credible reports, and the, uh, the, the mixing of public uh, resources with partisan politics w were identified by ODIR as continued concerns. So what the international community is, is looking for and hoping for and the president has committed to uh, is, uh, is improved elections over May uh, and in, specifically in those two areas. Uh, and and our hope is that, that these elections will become the new benchmark for elections uh, in, in the future. That these will be so good, they will be the new benchmark, the new normal uh, in uh, Armenian elections. And that's our hope and our expectation. Let me make one last uh, election comment. We co-hosted with the uh, OSC and the EU, you were probably there, a conference uh, on law enforcement, uh, uh, on the enforcing of the election law. And we were pleased that the leadership of all the law enforcement uh, bodies in Armenia, the police and the prosecutor general and the, all the key uh, bodies were there. Uh, and they all publicly now on the record have said that they will uh, fully investigate and take action on any reported violations. So I would encourage all the voters and all the citizens of Armenia uh, to take that seriously and, and, and put them to the test, hold them to their word, uh, that if you see something that doesn't look right or something that appears to be a violation, I think you should report it, and I hope you will report it. Uh, and, and I hope that uh, and expect that they will honor their commitment to, to take appropriate uh, investigations and take appropriate action in response. So uh, I think there was a, an important public commitment from the law enforcement community uh, and again I hope that makes these elections uh, in February next month uh, uh, the best elections ever as the president continues to say. Uh, so my question uh, is uh, if we have uh, free and fair elections that meet uh, democratic uh, European standards in that case uh, is it uh, possible for the uh, MCC uh, programs uh, to restart in Armenia? The first MCC compact that Armenia had was a really successful one. Concluded last year, uh, it, it, it accomplished a good deal of work, 170, 80 million dollars worth of work in water projects all over the country. And I know the MCA, the, 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 the body that, that follows this, was very pleased with the, with the work that was done on those water projects. So we would very much hope that Armenia would be eligible at some point in the future to compete for a second compact. 
And what's necessary for that to happen, uh, Armenia and all the countries that are competing for these funds, limited funds, need to pass uh, a, a, a series of indicators, 13 separate indicators. And some of these indicators, as you've, as you've suggested, are related to the elections. So strong, free, fair, and credible elections will be a boost for Armenia in the next round of competition for uh, a, a compact. But that's not the specific obstacle. The specific obstacle to Armenia competing this year was in the indicator on anti-corruption. So this is the main focus, and again, we talked to the Prime Minister at length about this this morning, uh, is for, for continued progress, continued work in the area of governance and transparency and anti-corruption uh, with the hope that Armenia's performance will improve so that it can compete for a second compact in, in a later year. Uh, do you uh, consider Armenia to be uh, safe uh, for investments? And when asked during your meetings uh, if they uh, can, uh, and have you been encouraging people to make investments in Armenia? And uh, were you uh, able to uh, provide uh, some guarantees uh, as an ambassador? Well, the answer to the second question is easy, no. It's not my country, it's your country. So I can't guarantee a thing. But the answer to the first question is 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 the balance that I that I portrayed. I mean there's there are some real success stories in US investment. And there are very many successful US companies here. The AmCham is very has a very broad based membership, very successful investors and companies here. And the IT sector, the uh, engineering and high tech sectors are again very prosperous uh, and we just had an additional uh, company uh, added to the list of investors here. Uh, a big U.S. company, Intel, well-known company, has just signed a memorandum and is to set up a presence here to join Synopsys and Microsoft and uh, a number of other companies, National Instruments, another uh, uh, a number of other key U.S. companies who are investing here very successfully. So there are definitely good news stories uh, on the investment side. But there are still issues, and, and the, the, the question, the Arminé's question about the, the rule of law questions and individual cases that investors have had, uh, these, are, these are real, they're well-known cases, and, and, the, and they are definitely uh, the, kind of, the kind of case that, that causes the diaspora, the investors, the natural investors in Armenia that caused them to be very cautious before coming here. And I'm very frank with about that. I talked about that in all my public meetings with the ambassador there and the prime minister there. Uh, we have a very open and, and, and uh, honest and friendly discussion on these questions. And uh, I think Armenia is trying to, trying to make, is making efforts in these regards, but there's still a lot more that needs to be done. Do you have uh, some statistics uh, about uh, how much was invested, uh, how much U.S. investment was made in Armenia in 2012? Uh, 2011, I think, was about, I'm not, not up on all the statistics, I think 2011 was about $40 million. Uh, 2012, uh, I don't know that the final numbers are in yet, it was less than that, unfortunately. Uh, so we hope very much that this year, 2013, uh, there's a chance for a couple of big investments and we hope for a broader uh, improvements in this area. Oh, sorry. Uh, so this question uh, may be partially related to your uh, diaspora tour. Uh, while you were in the United States, uh, Prime Minister uh, of Armenia visited uh, the U.S. And initially, uh, there were no plans uh, to, uh, for the Prime Minister to have uh, meetings with Vice President Biden and uh, the chairperson of the MCC. Uh, what uh, was the reason for this uh, unexpected change and uh, what made uh, those uh, meetings happen? Prime Minister traveled all around the states. He was there for, for several days. I saw him in Los Angeles. We had uh, lunch uh, uh, hosted by the, the mayor of Los Angeles, had a great lunch, hoping for an a, 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 a investment a mission, a trade mission from Los Angeles. So we talked a lot about that. And then we went to San Francisco together and spent the day at Armtech, had a, had a great day at Armtech. 
he then went to Boston and he, he visited, I'm not sure if you remember, we had a, a, a fun event, a 20th anniversary event that we did together with a group in Boston called the MIT Media Lab. And he visited the Media Lab in Boston. And then he went to Washington. All this to say that these meetings take time to organize and very often decisions of, of the schedules of, of principals, of leaders, come in at the last minute. His office contacted the embassy before we left on our trip and the embassy in Washington contacted the White House uh, in early December. The vice president was interested in the meeting and accepted in principle, but it just it was a matter of the timing of when the prime minister could be in Washington because of his other commitments and when the, when the vice president was, uh, was available. So I would say that the, the request came in a couple of weeks before the meeting happened. There was an agreement in principle very quickly. Uh, and then the question was just the timing, and that always comes uh, relatively uh, at the last minute. So I think it was a normal, uh, a normal uh, sequence of request and, and approval. I'm the Spanduk. There's no doubt I can host Kum Sasikur, Hyastani Amar Island Rank, Petke Pah Pamvi, Yevna Shetikor in a great yard of Mutka, Utsuna, Mitsano Utsuna. In your introductory remarks, uh, you mentioned that Armenia needs uh, to have uh, options. Uh, you mentioned that it is important to keep Armenia looking uh, towards west. And now, uh, at the moment, Armenia is uh, just uh, facing uh, these uh, options uh, of the Eurasian uh, Union or Euro-Atlantic uh, direction. Uh, some people have concerns that uh, Eurasian uh, Union, this uh, will bring back the Soviet Union and uh, so things like this. Uh, so what uh, do you uh, think about uh, these uh, options that Armenia is facing now? I think the government of Armenia has made it pretty clear and uh, in that it's that it's committed to the negotiation with the EU uh, for the a deep and comprehensive free trade agreement. Uh, I'm not a member of the EU, and so I can't really speak with first-hand knowledge of the, the negotiations, but the public statements have been very clear that the EU is committed to the negotiations, and the, govern of Ar the government of Armenia is, con is committed to the negotiations. Uh, the EU has spoken about the difficulty of doing both. You can't pursue both at the same time based on the EU rules, not US rules, EU rules, and so I think that those Actions and statements speak for themselves, and and uh, and I think a a, uh, a a free trade agreement with the European Union would be tremendously helpful uh, for Armenia and for the Europeans as well. The United States would benefit as well. A couple more. Uh, the U UK ambassador uh, expressed some uh, concerns which were uh, highly criticized uh, by the authorities. Uh, do you think that uh, the authorities uh, were, um, it was a, a proper thing uh, for the authorities uh, to uh, criticize uh, that statement of uh, the ambassador? Britania and Spain did not come in. If there are not arrived, the Gulf did not come. If the Chavai part will not come, then the Gulf is highest in the region. The Gulf is the most exciting. The Spain will not come. The Gulf will not come. The Gulf is the most exciting. And just to add on this question, do you share the concerns expressed by the UK ambassador? And besides, there was also a statement by the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe expressing a concern that uh, Armenian presidential elections uh, are not, uh, there's no strong competition in this, uh, they are not competitive elections. Uh, what do you think about this? Uh, the, the, the principle that political competition is a good thing is, is a valid one anywhere. So political competition is a good thing. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and so that's, that's the statement on competition. Political competition is a good thing. And our focus is on these elections being, it, being free, fair, and credible. Uh, and the government has committed to that. Uh, we will be watching carefully and we will be pushing and cajoling and encouraging any way we can. And, and that's going to be the standard that we're going to judge these elections on, on whether they are free, fair, and credible. There has been a statement uh, that uh, you are following the case of uh, diaspora investor uh, Hu Jian. Uh, so I just uh, would like to know whether you as an ambassador uh, can can do anything uh, for this case? Our goal here is, is systemic change. Our goal is to work with the government of Armenia so that all investors, U.S. investors, Armenian investors, European investors, Russian investors, everybody, 
uh, plays by the same rules and, and has a level playing field. So, so all of my conversations with the officials here are on that basis, that we are promoting systemic change uh, for everybody. Uh, there are cases that have been in the press that, uh, that or there could be problems, um, but our goal is systemic change for all investors and all uh, commercial traders with Armenia. All right, good. Thank you all very much. Uh, I would uh, like uh, you also to speak about uh, Armenian-Iranian uh, uh, relations and also about uh, Armenian-Turkish uh, relations. The U.S. was actively working uh, towards uh, Armenian-Turkish uh, reconciliation. Uh, will you continue uh, works in that direction after the elections? Uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. The, uh, the, uh, the, opening, the opening of that border is, is, is tremendously important uh, for Armenia uh, and, uh, and for the region. It actually would help Turkey as well. That's what's so frustrating about it. It would be in the mutual interest of both countries uh, to get that border open and to have trade uh, between, uh, between Armenia, direct trade between uh, Armenia and Turkey. So that absolutely remains one of our, one of our top priorities, uh, and I will continue to push that. On Iran, we have many conversations with our, our friends and partners here in Yerevan on Iran and on sanctions issues. And our strong message to all of our partners uh, on this issue is that, that strong sanctions and, and uh, political isolation will help resolve the nuclear question peacefully. And Armenia, uh, despite the, 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 the difficulty that this causes the country and it causes the economy, Armenia has upheld uh, international sanctions uh, on Iran, uh, U.S., EU, and, and, and U.N. sanctions, and we appreciate that, uh, and uh, we continue to stress that that's the way we can solve this problem peacefully is through uh, uh, international cooperation. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.